is not being all that aggressive. The Arlen, however, is one of the better picks for Lil Gun. And as we saw today, a lot of flashy plays. Actually, no, not just today, ever since yesterday. Yeah, no, it was you. Birthday Boy was looking for a three man, four man, five man <laughs> final slash. I didn't get it, though. Let's see if Maybe Isaac can now. pull one out because the Matilda here confirms that it is going into the XP lane. There's only really the room for the Matilda these days. How does Team Flash want to close up? Do they want to go ahead and give Adam here the XP lane hero now? I would believe Terizla is a great pick because if not, you're, they're just going to ban it out. And if he wants to be a little bit more aggressive, perhaps even the Khalid. Because I do believe if, if yeah. they don't pick up their EXP, high chance going to get banned out. So either the Khalid or Terizla. Terizla didn't do too well for him personally yesterday. Right. Khalid, much better. They could play around that. Also, the fact that uh, just with the first two picks, right, for Team Lil Gun, I like this a little more because you have the Nolan. And going back to the point, what we saw from the previous series, get a very hard time finding those initiations in. But with a Matilda and Arlot there to help you with, uh, you know, finding your own angles or even getting out in, you know, sticky situations, that's there available with you, like we saw even from the Matilda play yesterday. So. The answer here to round out the first phase is going to be the Lilia parking that into the mid lane here. How are you feeling so far, LaFell, about Team Flash's lineup? I would say a lot of control here. Um, they're making sure that they have the priority whenever they want to engage on Turl or the Lord because Lilia, Guinevere, as well as Bruno have quite a lot of uh, AoE, either damage or setup. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to contest those turtles, especially going up against Nolan. Now, I'm looking at the hero pool in terms of the mid, Time not much is open no right now. No like girl. the best that I can think of is perhaps an Ovaria. Mm. Sand rises get the I vision, get the word. work around that. There's the Khalid Ben, you know, that we kind of were theorizing if it would pop up here for the XP lane for Team Flash, but that's not going to happen. Also, we'll see if that even the last ban is again uh, the other possible option, which was the Terizla. We'll see if that works, but so far. I would say, yeah, what is going to be in the mid lane there for Team Lil Gun? Novaria, probably, right? At least for a vision to work around that. But still, is that really the best case? Also, we have, because the Guinevere is there, you know, does a team possibly even want to take a Diggy? I know there's already a Matilda there. There's the ban, right? So, because that's what I'm thinking. They could actually go with a Diggy in the mid lane and then the Matilda in the Rome. And they could even flip those around if they really wanted to, but it's banned out. So now, once again, what is left on the table here? Good question, Joseph. I forgot. What was your question again? What's what on the table? Available. What could they go with? For Logan for or the, Flash? Yeah, for the, for the mid lane, for Team Logan. Honestly, it's not a bad situation for quite a lot of mid laners. They're just not all that meta. Going up against, against Guinevere, you want someone that can protect herself. I'm thinking of the Kagura, one of my favorite heroes personally. And mm -hmm. you can burst down the Bruno pretty, pretty fast. But the problem with the Kagura is that your speed is going to be pretty slow. You need level 4 minimum. And even at that, sometimes you don't have enough uh, damage. So I'm really looking at Novaria as a possible good pick here. The other crazy one is the Lunox. But you only pick up the Lunox if it's super tanky from the opposing side. You all see that smile on the face of Adamir. He knows that Mitch, he knows that Team Lilligan are afraid of him on that Terizla. So he leans hard into it. All right, coach. They know. They first pick up the Minotaur. So I'm guessing what's left for him, the Paquito, yeah, the pa Lapu. Paquito, probably, if uh, they, you know, if they want to go that route. Uh, really, the base though. If they pick something up, like a Ixia, even a Yuzong. We, haven't, is, seen a, we haven't seen a lot of Yuzong. We, uh, which is weird, right? It <laughs> is very <laughs> weird. Hero of the M5. That's right. They could go for uh, the, uh, the uh, Ixia here. Could go for the Brody, too. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, it's risky, but we've seen a lot of gold leaners liking the Claude. Yeah. It, it, I mean, again, it has its own kind of like win condition you can go with. Kaja's going to be picked whoa, up. Matilda mid. So Matilda the mid, there's mid the Brody. A Matilda, and then a Rome Kaj. Uh, I don't know, man. I guess they're, 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 they're hedging on the fact that the Nolan deals so much damage. Four that, minutes is going to be yeah, a time. That they can afford to do this with the Matilda in mid. I'm looking at four minutes. I kind of feel like at four minutes, Lil Gun will, will do something here. Again, if you think back of their play style, the wild card, when they showed these reverse sweeps and everything, they loved 
the timing, the early timing, the early momentum, and if it's pickoff potential, but then you sprinkle in some utility with Matilda, that could work really well for them, plus the Arlot there. Nolan, though, he's their glass cannon, so to speak, for the majority of this game. This Kaja has one good target and one bad target. Good for the Lilia because you can't escape with the black shoes and Lilia has very low HP. But bad with the Guinevere. If the Guinevere exits her fake body, then you're gonna be, you know, locking on the wrong target. Yep. Her Kage Bunshin. Yeah, the fake body. You gotta work around that. But one thing that sticks out here, and I'll let you talk a little bit more about this, LaFell, what you think of the compositions. They're so tanky on the other side of Team Flash, right? They're so durable, and it might be a little bit hard for them if they do try to go for a pickoff, and then someone doesn't yeah. go down right away here. So let's go ahead and look at this breakdown, LaFell. The weakness of a very strong body is if you take down the body very, very early on. Because if your composition banks on the fact that you guys can just Trem tremble? Tremble? Trump. 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 If you can trample over your opponents, if that's your win condition, if your tramplers cannot do the trampling, yep. then it's not going to be looking good. So I feel like the Kaja in the early game just killed the Minotaur, just killed the Edith, and then there will be no problem. They're not going to be afraid of anything. Well, we'll find out if they're afraid or not. LaFell's giving it. The trample is the key here. Loading into uh, the land of dawn. Game number one here, second series of day number three. Team Lil Gun and Team Flash. Team Lil Gun making their debut since the wild card here. We'll see exactly how they decide to download this game alone and come out swinging. Or do they answer to Team Flash here already? Early rotations coming through. LaFell, how are things looking to play? Right now, it does look like what Team Flash was trying to do was to pressure the mid and perhaps try to figure out where Nolan is. But Forbit, as well as Ethan, has been doing quite a good job to make sure that they stay in their own lane. Making sure that uh, Zixora is not being, uh, not getting, uh, I don't know what, what, what was the word, not getting slowed down. And in fact, the fact that Zixora is now going inside the opposing jungle is more or less just going to equalize because that's basically the same thing what Hades is doing. I'm really looking at Team Nilgan. If they're not slowed down by the fifth or fourth minute mark, might be their game. Yeah, and even looking at the emblems here, anything that sticks out for you to give that early advantage that they might be looking for? The rupture on the Arlet shows that early rotations coming in from the Arlet might give off more damage than you expect. Yeah, that's the double also common emblem being used here. But already, you know, early on, there probably is going to be too much forced out right now because even the lineup here. Uh oh. oh. Aizen gets knocked up into the skies. Full on combo Ooh. from Hades. They drop first blood. The clap back from Zixara. Here comes the cavalry. Three members from the Mongolian squad. Not enough of a hold just yet. Adamir gets away. Okay, so take that back. I didn't think there was going to be a kill before the first turtle, but Team Flash able to find it. Get, get it in the hands of Hades as well, right? So in terms of the jungle matchup, that's a little bit of an advantage he can work with. And now leading into this first turtle, if Team Flash is able to secure the first objective, you know, Team Logan, they'll be working back from a deficit early on already. So we'll see how it all plays out once again. Just both gold laners duking it out for now. I would say it's a big advantage for Team Flash having that kill onto Hades, but the lineup from Team Lil Gun, it's not going to be easy for Hades to actually catch anyone. Oh. Ain't no one home. Free turtle take for Team Flash. I think Team Lil Gun just have to accept the fact that they're not just there yet. Team Flash understand the speed that Lil Gun's capable of. Level fours already across the board, except for Aizen and Ethan. Is that what you're referring to about fours? Oh. Uh. Or is it timers at four? I would say timers at four. I kind of feel like the time just dropped a little bit just because of how uh, Aizen was killed earlier on. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Team Nilgan, the way that they're moving around the map is not as aggressive as I would hope for. Perhaps this is more of them downloading, understand what Team Flash is doing, because even at the goal lane, it looks like Vanix is able to push Brody off, is able to push Bebex off the, off the farm. Adamir winning his lane as well. Right now, Team Flash, they're controlling all sense of the map. Yeah, again, early on, these decisions here do build up quite quickly so far from what we've seen from these other games, right? But Team Logan, they're gonna have to catch up here just a little bit. If they can get into a position where they can contest the next objective, which is gonna be that turtle here in less than a minute, that would be best. Forbid, oh. down to a third of his health. Gonna have to disengage. Not a good look, going up against three members of Team Flash. About a thousand gold ahead. You can already see how those little items actually add up. 
Yeah, and right now I'm really looking at Ethan as well as Exora. I kind of feel like they should be moving around the map together because at this point you could get a kill because I feel like the Fracture is going to be strong enough, especially to take out Jay. If they can take out Jay, making sure that perhaps two or three deaths before the Lord starts, it might affect his confidence and it can affect how they want to play around that neutral objective. Cool. Double blades here too, also for Team Logan. So I feel like the past four minutes has been that setup. Like, let's wait till we find the pickoff we're looking for, right? Ethan is going to be the guy to do that with the Divine Judgment, and that's what they're looking to follow up. Get that initial burst down, get the numbers advantage, and then turn the tide from there because what's across from them once again is Team Flash's very durable, tanky lineup. Here we go, Ethan with the Divine Judgment. Down goes the big old cow, Lozzi. Gets taken down the trade off for Bambex and Ethan. Big, big wins for Team Flash underneath Tier 1 in mid. They're forcing the issue. Jay crossing the threshold. Black Shoes on out. Turtle still getting taken care of by Hades. Team Flash with a big dub. I would say amazing play coming in from Team Flash. The right idea, trying to take down Lulzy very, very early on. It's kind of like investing your, your resources to make sure that when the Lord comes, it's not going to be all that great, but hold on. Aizen taking a little bit of damage. Going back to my point, Adamir as well as Hades tried their best to protect Lulzy and just by default, you, you got a lot out of it. So amazing play by Adamir as well as Hades. Yeah, again, when you saw that team fight kind of unfold, that's exactly what they were going for, right? They had the double blades they were working for. They got a quick kill on Lulzy, but after the initial burst was done, there was nothing else they could do, right? They just kind of run out of firepower, so they kind of have to upgrade and get to a point where then you have Bebex there later on to provide some of that damage, pump out the Torn Apart memories, because when that initial burst is gone, Team Logan just kind of runs out of, you know, firepower, so to speak. So with that, they might want to just go ahead, stay a little passive for the most part. If you can't grab a kill with Ethan utilizing the combination with the Divine Judgment, then maybe just play a little safe for now. But really the question is, is that the right choice with a Nolan in oh. the draft? And that is tough as well. That's that's miserable. Grant that purple. Hades guilty of one count already. Zexara has to lick his wounds. Yeah, Hades is oh, Zexara finds Hades and Lozi oh. finds Ethan. And the full-on combo using the old to cleanse Team Lilgun on the back foot. Right now, honestly, Team Flash, they're looking very good because Hades already completed his Genius 1. So at this point, he kind of doesn't need, even need his team. He can go in by himself. Yeah, the damage is kind of scary, right? Very if scary. And you and I think even Gideon yesterday talked about this with the Guinevere, the way that it works. But again, when you line it up with having this Minotaur, having an Edith by your side, you're not so worried, right? Because you can jump in with a Spatial Migration. If you land it, great. You pump out the damage, you get out, and you can have still set up heal even available for you, right? And that's why this whole time, man, Vanex has just been having the gold lane experience. He hasn't had to do too much. He's farming up, and eventually, he's going to be the big threat here for against Team Logan. The way that I look at it, with the bill coming in from Hades, all the crowd control that Guinevere has is just icing on the cake. Yeah. Shout out, shout out again to Mundan. Because at this point, he doesn't really need all those crowd controls. He could just run them down. What are they going to do about it? The genius one is enough. Yeah, that's the scary part of it, right? Again, can you buy enough time? We've seen so many games here get to that first Lord spawn, and you have this lead now. It's almost you know, nearly 5,000 gold. And when it gets to that, oh, hold on, Ethan. Oh, the Divine Judgment circling Eagle. Got caught. The answer back. Middle of Fury. Ain't no one home. Backing off. Team of Flash. Tight formations. Lil Gun calls for the back off. At least they know their dynamic. At least they know that neither team could have forced that in that jungle pit. A little bit of mistake there. It looks like Ethan was a little bit desperate trying to get any kind of kills that he can. But the fact that Lulzy was there trying to protect um, Hades, that was the big difference maker. But it would have, he could have gotten a kill if, oh, that's tough. Oh. And the flicker as well. Oh. Yeah, that's tough to recover from, right? All They're this, downloading. They're downloading right now. They're trying to download. Oh. I don't think they're going to convert anything here, really. They're going to lose that Tier 2 in the bottom lane. And this is looking very dire right now, right? It's eight and a half minutes in. You still have a little bit till that Lord's up. But really, Team Lone Gun, where do you find this moment to turn things around? Is it Aizen that has to land this final slash? Because even if you final slash, you know, any of these members in, Lolzi or Adamir, 
can most likely just jump in and cause chaos. Honestly, at this first thing for me, Team Lil Gun has to find a way to get some kind of map control because the strength of the Kaja is that you don't know where this Kaja is going to come from. If they find a way to flank from behind, catch Vanix off first, hide away, wait for your cooldowns, and then go back in for Jay or Hades, that's probably a good win oh. condition. Look at this. Lozi caught up, circling eagle. The answer back from Forbid. Lozi very low. Lozi gonna survive. There's the old spent up. Oh, Primal Wrath keeping Adam here alive. Extra HP. Just like that, Team Flash still with the senses. So even with that, you can see even here in the items, right? The, it looked like that should have been a moment where they could have gotten a kill. What happened there, LaFell? Not enough damage. Um, it really, Bebex probably needs a Malefic Roar. Then it might be enough. He's and 2k behind. I mean, that and they have a Matilda where the Matilda's damage is conditional. Oh, here Sora. we go. They're looking to blitz it. Circling Eagle, the answer back. Lozi not oh. the final slash. Big ticket old, but forbid bites the dust. Bebex trading in. Isaac taken out. Vanix gets his first kill. Down goes the Xora. Oh. It's almost a hat trick for Vanix this time. Ethan running off. There it is. Ole! Team Flash. Oh, just go Big for it. wins. Ethan running off. The only survivor. The Singaporean squad takes everything. <sighs> the reason why I say the Matilda's damage is situational. The way that her, her Wisp work is that they're going to find a target and then they're going after it. But if it's a singular target, that's maximum damage. If there's a lot of people there, you're going to you're gonna spread it out. And sometimes that makes it that it's not enough. At this point, the whole problem with their composition is it's very pickoff heavy. If teams are moving together, you don't have a good target that you want to pick off. And at this point, Vanix has killed up. He has all the damage. He can 1v5 he wants. So I was saying, you know, you get to that point where you're in the gold lane experience and then you just pop off like he just did here. Look at the massive gold advantage Ooh. that Vanix has as well because of that triple that he got. So this gets even scarier because for Team Little Gun, you're, that's what you're seeing, right? If the final slash is going to be utilized by Aizen or let's say even Ethan jumps in, really once one of those are taken out, you don't have this kind of front line to really deal with a lot of the damage being thrown at you from Team Flash, right? And that's the whole point of the draft. They wanted to go with these pickoff uh, oriented plays, but right now they're gonna have to defend into their base here at the whims of Team Flash. First turret already gonna go down. They're already inside the base. They're making work of that Lord. Oh. Divine Judgment on to Adam here. Forbid gets the kill. Lord taken care of, sacrificing their mid lane inhibitor. Bottom lane up next, big siege canyons. The minions are still crashing on through, and Team Flash not gonna force the issue. I would say that's still a pretty good trade. I mean, they lost Adam here, but they got two inhibitors at this point. Team Little Gun, it looks like the way they can get a kill is if they actually pull Team Flash into their base. But again, there's a cooldown on that Divine Judgment. You can, get, you can only get one. After you get that one, what are you gonna do next? Not only that, but the disparity between the damage dealt between both gold laners speaks for itself because of how much of a gap there is in terms of the gold that we talked about earlier, right? So really, when you're looking at it once again, Team Logan probably has to buy another five plus minutes. And if that's finding some pickoffs, great. If they can make that happen. But really, a lot of that has to rely right now on Bebex. He's got to get to a point where he can pump out the damage. Oh, oh Hades. Forbid. He uses the Purify you were saying about Hades. Yeah, again, that was a love tap. It was. It was kind of just, the thing is, is Team Flash is so far ahead right now, and they know that even with the lineup they have, they can make choices like that. Whether they're checking bushes with Hades, whether it be Adamir, they have so many options down the line they can go yeah. with here. They're really looking at Bebex as well as Exora to deal with damage because even the Matilda, this is more of a utility kind of build. So they're trying to survive longer than Team Flash, but I don't know how there's going to work out because Bebex, I don't think that Bebex can have a good position going up against Team Flash because you want to get close enough to deal damage, but if you're close enough to deal damage, you're close enough to get caught. That's <laughs> yeah. a big problem. It's a downside. You you. You pick the Brody because of the space, right? You work with the space, but how do you get the marks off when you have this lineup like this just barreling their way into the jungle even? An additional problem is the fact that 
Bro, he needs time. You need those stacks. And Team Flash, they're not letting Little Gun find those windows of opportunity. But wait, they're coming in. Conceal play from Forbid. Finding that angle up top. Big knock up from the Lord. Oh. Circling Eagle. Haka! Unless. Oh, Aizen gets taken down first. So that's already a man down. Two men down. Adamir gets two. Adamir traded out for. Ethan goes as well. Yeah, Bebex. Where are you going? Hades takes him down. ZX oh, oh. falls, but steals the Lord in the process. Not worth it. Team Flash no. gonna go straight for the base. Oh, I think that's gonna be it here again. He did get the Lord. There's still about 14 seconds, 10 seconds for Ryzen, and Team Flash will run it in. That's it. Game one, 15 minutes under Team Flash 1-0. Again. I just have to remind you, that was an amazing game. Team Flash ended it in a flash, but this is the way Lil Gun plays. Is this what they wanted? Do they want to download first and apply later? This is the world stage. This is not wild card. Can they do it? And that's why I'm wondering, because we, we have experienced this in the wild card, right? This looks like, again, regardless of if they are downloading or not, Team Flash, man, they, they dominated this game. They, they executed the lineup that they had very well. They worked around it, and they knew, hey, there's going to be pick off, uh, a pickoff potential and threat from Team Logan with what they have, but it wasn't the way that it should have been with that lineup for Team Logan. Team Flash came out swinging. They played it perfectly. They rounded their bases with the draft that they had. They're quite tanky to deal with, and we just got to a point once again where you had that gold lane experience. You had the fact that Hades could jump in, pump up the damage if he wanted to, but still rely on peels and everything else. So really, this was just a well-executed game for Team Flash. I'm of two minds here. The fact that Team Lil Gun is notorious for allowing game one losses, and the fact that this is a different stage. I don't think you should be playing this way, especially since Team Flash are not holding out any aces, specifically this ace right here. Here we go, MVP of the game. You got the heart sign there as well. What a performance here for Vanix. The gold lane experience as we talked about. Bruno here at 3 0 and 5. I mean, looking at the way that he plays, we saw he had the idea, I want that maniac. And I kind of believe he deserved it because in this game, he made sure that Bebex does not get to play that, that gold lane. Yeah. There were so many minions denied. Not only that, but uh, just the way that this was executed as a team effort, right? Vanix, he was kind of just under the radar for a majority of that early to mid game. And as we take a look here, of course, at the highlights, it started off early on with that first blood going through. And there was some fight here, right, from Team Little Gun, really trying to pull things out to go in their favor. But once again, like I said, the initial burst damage that they had early on, if it fell off eventually throughout an extended team fight, when you have these tanky heroes across from you, you don't you just kind of run out of firepower. What makes Vanix worthy of the MVP nod here is the fact that if you're playing a game this one-sided, wherein you're having as y'all fellas call the gold lane experience, it's so easy to throw a lead away like that. It's so easy to overextend. It's so easy to just click your ult and then say, hey, where's everybody else? Why aren't y'all protecting me? He stayed on 100%. He was woke. I gotta give props to Team Flash here because they understand the timings. If Lil Gun wants to play around minute four, they started the, the, the match at 1.30. Straight to the EXP lane. Make sure that Aizen does, doesn't get to play. Yep. And then just go from there. They, they understand that if you start at four, we're going to start way early, earlier when you're not expecting it. And not only that, but even just looking at the breakdown here, once again, it was, you know, Team Flash just coming out swinging. They really punished when there was an overextension from Team Low Gun, or even if they didn't give them time, right? Sometimes it was, okay, we're going to probably get Divine Judgment. They might be able to get our way. There's going to be a final slash thrown at us. But really, they had the answers they needed. And when it got to the itemization part, right, it just, with the lead that you have, especially in the gold lane, for example, or any of these across from them, you just have that advantage that's hard to deal with. And now I'm wondering even, Nolan has struggled so far. You know, we, we've seen it now time and time. He struggled, but he actually had quite the farm. This is very respectable from a losing lineup that's able to outfarm the opponent, right? I mean, call it what you will, a utility tank build Guinevere. But ZXora had the items. ZXora had the farm. It's just 
he couldn't find the opportunity. Yes, at that very last moment, he stole the Lord, but that's the very last thing you want to do as a Nola. You want to kill. Yeah, I would say it was way too late because if he was able to dish out damage, especially to Lolzy earlier on, making the Minotaur a non-factor, it will make it much easier for the Kaja to catch anyone off guard because having that Minotaur was one of the big reasons why Lilgun couldn't really catch anyone. Um, Minotaur, the um, the Edith, even Hades as well. Because not only that, but if you did, let's say you did try to catch someone, right? It was difficult enough to get Vanix, but then it's it's a Lily across from you, right? Most likely she's just going to be able to get, get away with the Black Shoes and work around that. So really, target acquisition here for this lineup that Team Lil Gun had, very difficult to work around with, right? Yeah. Even, yes, again, you have crazy farm on that Nolan, but really, what does that translate to?